in science in general, purpose and value seem to be talked about, at least in the social sciences, in management sciences, but then as, as science reduces down to psychology, to biology, to chemistry, to, to physics, it, it seems as if purpose and value are, are done away with entirely, you know, to the point where, uh, where they say there is no such thing as, as purpose or, or value in the physical universe. You take a different view, don't you? Well, there's a perfect good reason for leaving out purpose because it doesn't have any explanatory value. Mm. And I'm, I'm familiar with it, for instance, in patents. You can't patent the purpose to fish or the purpose to fly. Uh, you can see why. It's <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Uh -huh. But if you show a device by which you could fish or fly, then you can patent that. Mm -hmm. So purpose is out so far as describing a patent or a patent is concerned. And it's rather similar in science because it doesn't have any uh, descriptive value. Now, as, as for, uh, well, value, that's a different thing again. I think that science does deal with what corresponds to value. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want me to take off on that? Or? Well, you, in the physical sciences, you mean? Yes. Well, yeah, let's, let, let's talk about that because, you know, so often science says we are value-free, that, that right. anybody can replicate an experiment regardless of their religion, their race, their creed, their color, because values don't enter into physical science. Well, that uh, has to do with the methodology. Mm -hmm. In other words, you must be objective. You can't put your hand on the scale. You can't prejudice, bias the results. Yeah. It has to be value-free mm -hmm. in that sense. In, so, in sociology, so, there's a big argument that says that that's impossible, that nobody is really value-free. Well, it is possible to make an experiment mm -hmm. without putting your hand on the yeah. scale. In the physical sciences, it in, is. In a literal mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. But that's quite a different thing from saying there are no values in nature or that the world doesn't you see, uh, to me, value is not objective. I think everyone would agree to that. Yes. And that's one reason it's left out of the scientific method, because the scientific method has to be objective. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the things you're dealing with are entirely objective. I mean, how could everything be objective? Then what is the meaning of, of projective or subjective? If it has to be one to be the other. Well, perhaps we could just define these terms as you use them. I use the word projective to get away from the personal. Uh, uh, the word subjective implies that it's in your a person's head or in their feelings. Mm -hmm. But what's subjective to you is not objective to me. I can see your face, I can see your suit, but I can't see your feelings. Yeah. Your feelings are something you alone feel. Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're, they're not subjective to me. My feelings are subjective to me. Mm -hmm. So the more general word is projective. I can say your feelings are projected by you and my feelings are projected by me. Projected in the sense that your feelings if you feel badly, then everything looks gloomy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I might describe the world about me by projecting my internal reality right. out. Right, and that mm -hmm. wouldn't help if you were doing experiments. You might even foul up the experiments just because you were feeling fouled up right. yourself. I mean, principal scientists are not supposed to do this. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, let's say that's a good, good goal. But that doesn't mean that reality doesn't have this projective aspect. Mm -hmm. And where it appears in science is with forces. Now, of course, science deals with forces. Yeah. But let's, let me take you off a little bit now. Okay. Suppose I were to say, we're talking about business, and suppose I were to say there's no such thing as value, everything is forms. Okay. Well, that would be ridiculous because the businessman doesn't care about the forms. He invests his money in one thing and then changes it into another and then into another. That's hence the term liquid assets. Mm -hmm. 
And the more liquid a business is, the more money it's likely to make. If you get stuck on the, on the form aspect, you'll uh, go on making something that's obsolete and can't uh -huh. sell it. I suppose it might be fair to say that a businessman is mostly concerned with value. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be very foolish to say there was no such thing as value if you were in business. Right. You shouldn't be in business mm -hmm. if you said that. Well, it's similarly wrong to say there's no such thing as force in science. Mm -hmm. Even though force cannot be objectively described. But in, in physics, one hears about the so-called the four forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the weak force, the strong force. I get the feeling, you know, as, not as a physicist, but as a layman, that they, that they think they can objectively describe these forces. No, but that's just it. Mm -hmm. They're stuck when it comes to describing a force as a force. So they substitute something. Oh. It could be saying it's the bending of space-time. Mm -hmm. Now, if that means anything to you, fine, but it That's doesn't mean much to me. That's how gravity is described, and it's always right. been a puzzler to me, too. The alternative is to say it's a shower of gravitons. Mm -hmm. Well, how could a shower of gravitons cause things to attract each other? Now, yeah. I'm just bringing out some of the foolishness of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not doing justice to science, but uh, I'll try to do justice, because for example, suppose you say a shower of gra gravitons is causing gravity. Well, the reason they've invented these hypothetical gravitons is because they're something like li they want something like light, which yeah. is radiated. Mm -hmm. But then, if we turn to a black hole, now I think everyone knows what a black hole is, but it's defined as something that's so dense, so heavy that light can't escape from it, can't radiate from it. Well, then how could the gravitons radiate from it <laughs> if they're mm. to be modeled after light? Mm -hmm. after light? Mm -hmm. Well, at any rate... And yet it has intense gravity is the whole right, point of the black right, hole, that the right. gravity is stronger than the light. Right, uh -huh. and it keeps the light from radiating. Yeah. But if the graviton is so named, to be like light, how could it be radiated? Yeah. Well, this, these are paradoxes in physics, and, and I guess what you're saying is we should look at these paradoxes because they tell us something, and right. other physicists often tend to say, well, we should just ignore the paradoxes and deal with what we do know about. Well, I'm talking about these uh, paradoxes, but they're, more than that, they're ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, to, and if you I think we should go on further, though, but uh, okay. I don't want to labor this point. I'm just saying that forces mm -hmm. cannot be described conceptually. Right. Well, I think what your, your point is, or the point you'd like to bring us to, is that from the notion of the forces in physics, we can derive a concept of value in nature. That nature is full of values. Uh -huh. Posit uh, protons like electrons protons don't like other protons. <laughs> they repel one another. Mm -hmm. How do you explain this? How do you, how do you describe uh, attraction? Mm -hmm. In order to describe attraction, you can't do it conceptually. You have to say, well, it's like I'm attracted to a beautiful mm -hmm. girl. I, and I think most physicists, if they were really honest, would admit that physics hasn't yet explained the basic concept of attraction. Well, it's all right not to explain it. Uh -huh. I'm criticizing putting it under the rug and saying that you've accounted for it by a shower of something or other. Mm -hmm. we, mind you, the shower in, of, in the case of electricity has yeah. to go both ways. Mm -hmm. You have to sh have a shower that attracts and another shower that repels. Mm -hmm. And these have to be going on both at once. And you seem to be saying that a better analogy would be our own feelings, our own emotions. To just accept that nature, like ourselves, has emotions, forces. What does the emotion come from? Something that causes motion. Mm -hmm. Well, that's precisely what causes the motion of the planets, is forces. Mm -hmm. And it causes the motion of electrons, motion of everything. So motion and the cause, forces which cause motion are as much part of nature as are these forms and shapes which you can describe mm -hmm. conceptually. Mm -hmm.